Since its debut in 1992, Mortal Kombat has been notorious for its gore and violence, specifically by allowing players to finish their opponents after beating them in a fight. For that, the series has been a constant target of criticism. From concerned parents to worried congressmen, the franchise has been involved in serious controversies, some of which came close to destroying the entire fighting game series. In this list, we'll look back at some of the obstacles that almost killed Mortal Kombat. I hope you walk away with one thought today, that if you don't do something about it, we will. Number 1. An International Backlash we have to do something about uh, maybe what they're seeing and how they're seeing it, and also video games. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. While the first installments of Mortal Kombat stirred lots of controversies in the past, none of them went as far as to be officially banned internationally. That until MK9 came along in 2011. After a disappointing release of MK vs DC Universe which was noted for its toned down finishing moves, the Netherrealm Studios wanted to satisfy its longtime fans by bringing back the gore and violence that the series is known for. That goal was embodied in Mortal Kombat's 2011 iteration, which on top of the graphic violence, a new feature was added to their already notorious fatalities. They called it the X-Ray Attack. These attacks along with the graphic violence shocked the world once again, but this time, several countries decided that enough was enough. Countries like Australia, Germany and South Korea all elected to put a ban on the title, which was unsuccessfully appealed by the game's publisher Warner Bros Interactive. Despite the fact that the ban was overturned in most countries a few years later, some countries still have strict rules when it comes to video game gore and violence, and even countries like Japan won't see a release of the upcoming Mortal Kombat 11. I will destroy our enemies before they destroy us, starting with you. Number 2. Blood on the Carpet In a TV commercial entitled Blood on the Carpet, Midway aimed to promote Shaolin Monks, featuring a professional meeting where a conflict resolver named Mr. Lin was brought in to help deal with the dispute between the employees. Surprisingly enough, instead of resolving the disagreement peacefully, Mr. Lin orders the businessmen to fight each other to death instead. <laughs> As you may have anticipated, the Advertising Standard Authority publicly criticized the ad, stating that it condoned violence and even instructed the publisher Midway to pull the ad. In a similar commercial entitled It's in a Soul, Midway wanted to drum up interest for Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance in 2002. This time, it featured real people going through life and putting their hands on each other for things like a handshake or a hug, but leaving blood prints behind. It was meant to show that everyone had the capability to be a killer because everyone loved Mortal Kombat. Except of course the advertising standard authority wasn't feeling the love at all and just like the case of Shaolin Monks, the poster was called irresponsible and Midway had to wind up pulling the ad as a result. But if an ad is wrong, the ASA is here to put it right. Number 3. Sexism no substitute for experience. So what makes you our leader? In modern Mortal Kombat games, the costumes have become as important as the movesets and the finishers. Probably to attract a certain demographic, developers featured extremely revealing clothing and unrealistic body proportions for females in MK9. This led many critics to voice their concern over how females are depicted in video games in general and Mortal Kombat in specific. In order not to be associated with the image of violence as sexy and depicting females as sexualized characters, developers at the Netherrealm Studios decided to head towards a more realistic look for MKX, where females look not as exaggerated as they did in the previous installment. A basic example is Kitana's appearance in MK9 compared to MKX. Number 4. The Limbo 
It's panned by critics as one of the worst games in the franchise. Two years later, John Tobias decides to leave Midway and start his own company, Studio Gigante. I was looking for an opportunity to kind of branch off and, and sort of retain a bit of ownership in the things that I create. Mortal Kombat rose to fame and earned millions of fans mostly during the golden age of arcade video games. However, after the first three iterations and the proliferation of home consoles, the franchise entered a state of oblivion for over a decade until coming to light once again with the release of MK9 in 2011. Some argue that this happened due to John Tobias' departure from Midway in the late 90s. In case you didn't know, Tobias was the lead character designer on the first four installments, creating iconic characters such as Sub-Zero, Raiden, and Goro. His departure left the Mortal Kombat team scrambling, and Midway was eventually forced to utilize new character designers, who subsequently created some of the weirdest characters such as Dramen, Cobra, and Suhao. Number 5. Mortal Kombat vs. the U.S. Congress Would you find Mortal Kombat, yes. Night Trap? You wouldn't find Night Trap, no, you to my knowledge. I've certainly never seen Night Trap out of commercial Would you find Sega's version of Mortal Kombat in that arcade? Well, in the coin-up, uh, Mortal Kombat is not put out by either Sega or Nintendo. It's put out by a Illinois company. This probably is the most well-known controversy that Mortal Kombat has ever been involved in because it almost led to its demise. After several violent episodes in the US that were blamed on video games, many government officials including former President Bill Clinton argued that gory video games such as Mortal Kombat were a threat to the youth of America and warranted government regulation. During the hearing, Mortal Kombat was labeled overwhelmingly violent, sexist, and racist and as a result, the ESRB rating system was created which intends to aid consumers in determining a game's content and suitability based on age. Today the video game industry is announcing the establishment of an independent rating system that promises to give parents for the first time a clear idea of which video games are good for their kids and which should stay out of their homes. So, some believe that Mortal Kombat wouldn't be the number one fighting game of all time had it not been for all the controversies it created over the years. Do you agree with that? Let us know in the comment section below. For more, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Game Lucian.